Welcome to this video. Usually, we work with isotropic materials. An isotropic material behavior does not depend on the direction. In other words, the material behavior and constants are exactly the same in all directions. For example, applying tension in X or Y and Z directions have the same result, and we can conclude that moduli are the same for all directions. Remained elastic constants of the material like Poisson ratio and shear modulus are also the same for all directions. What about anisotropic materials? What is the most general form of anisotropic material? What are subcategories of anisotropic materials like monoclinic materials, orthotropic materials and transversely isotropic materials? If you are interested to find out everything about these materials, please keep watching this video and please check videos of this playlist. At first we are going to understand the most general form of the Hooke's Law, by considering an isotropic material without any kind of symmetry. Consider the nine components of the stress tensor, and also the nine components of the strain tensor. Imagine the material is linear elastic, therefore each component of the stress, is a linear combination of nine strains. So each function requires nine constants and we need nine function for all components of stress tensor. We can also write this relation by the fourth order tensor of stiffness as Z. These relations show that we need 81 constants for this material. But this is terrible. We should find a way to simplify this problem. Fortunately, stress and strain tensors are symmetric, and we can rewrite them as arrays with six components. To relate these two arrays, we need to a 6 by 6 stiffness matrix with 36 constants. But is there any way to further reduce this number? Derivatives of elastic energy of the material is symmetric with regards to strain. Therefore, it can be shown that stiffness matrix is symmetric. In other words, the blue and red components are the same, and this matrix needs 21 constants. To analyze elastic behavior of a material without any kind of symmetry we need 21 constants. It is interesting to understand the meaning of some parts of the stiffness matrix. These nine components relate normal stresses to shear strains. You cannot observe these connections in isotropic materials. These connections mean that by applying normal stress to the material, the response contains shear strains rather than normal strains, and vice versa. These three components relate shear stresses in one plane to the shear strains in other planes. In contrast with isotropic material, that only shear stress and strain of each plane affect each other, for this material shear stresses and strains of different planes are connected. Before introducing the subcategories of anisotropic materials we should understand the meaning of material symmetry. Consider a material which its composition is symmetric with regard to a plane. This symmetry means that the composition is also symmetric to all the planes parallel to this plane. Please note that this kind of symmetry is related to the composition of the material and geometry is not important. Monoclinic materials, as a subset of anisotropic materials, have one plane of symmetry. As an example, consider this combination of two materials. The resulted material is symmetric with regards to the planes with the normal vector parallel to the first axis. Now consider the general form of the stiffness matrix. How can we simplify this matrix for a monoclinic material? To understand the behavior of a monoclinic material we need to investigate symmetric and asymmetric loads with regards to the plane of symmetry. These stresses and strains are symmetric with regards to the plane of symmetry. Symmetric loads contain normal stresses and strains in all directions and shear stress and strain in the plane of symmetry. These stresses and strains are asymmetric with regards to the plane of symmetry which include shear stresses and strains in planes perpendicular to the plane of symmetry. The key point is that, when the material is symmetric with regards to this plane, if we apply a symmetric load the response is also symmetric, therefore, the symmetric and asymmetric loads and responses cannot be connected in the stiffness matrix. These six components relate the normal stresses as symmetric loads to the asymmetric shear strains. So they are zero. These two components relate the symmetric shear stress to the asymmetric shear strains. So they are zero too. In summary eight components are zero. Now we can write the final form of the stiffness matrix. Please note that stiffness matrix is symmetric, so we replaced eight more components with zero. Finally, to analyze a monoclinic material we need 13 constants. 
orthotropic materials, as the next subset of anisotropic materials, have two or three planes of symmetry. Consider this structured combination of two materials. The resulted material is symmetric with regards to the planes with a normal vector parallel to the first, second and third axes. Considering symmetry with regards to the planes normal to direction 1, we can start with the monoclinic stiffness matrix. Now we want to simplify this matrix based on symmetry to the plane normal to the second axis. These stresses and strains are symmetric with regards to this plane. Similar to the first plane, symmetric loads contain normal stresses and strains in all directions, and shear stress and strain in the plane of symmetry. These stresses and strains are asymmetric with regards to the second plane of symmetry. As before, the symmetric and asymmetric loads and responses cannot be connected in the stiffness matrix. These six components relate the normal stresses as symmetric loads to the asymmetric shear strains. So they are zero. These two components relate the symmetric shear stress to the asymmetric shear strains. So they are zero too. In summary four more components are zero. Now we can write the final form of the stiffness matrix. Please note that using the symmetry with regards to the third plane does not change the stiffness matrix, therefore the two or three planes of symmetry have the same results, and both are considered as orthotropic materials. To analyze an orthotropic material, we need nine constants. To find out relations of the component of the stiffness matrix to the engineering constants of the material like moduli please watch our next video. Transversely isotropic materials, as the last subset of anisotropic materials, have an axis of symmetry. Consider random distribution of a reinforcement in a material. The resulted material is symmetric with regards to the axis 1. In other words, the material behavior is the same for all the directions in 2-3 plane, or the material is isotropic in 2-3 plane. As the material has two planes of symmetry, we can start with the orthotropic stiffness matrix. Now we want to simplify this matrix based on the equality of axis 2 and axis 3. Material behavior is the same in these two directions therefore C22 equals C33, and C12 equals C13. Then note that the material has the same shear behavior in planes 1, 2 and 1, 3, so C55 equals C66. Isotropic behavior in plane 2, 3 results, that C44 is a function of C22 and C23. Now we can write the final form of the stiffness matrix. To analyze a transversely isotropic material, we need five constants. To find out how to define an isotropic materials in Abaca software please watch our next video. Thanks for watching this video. If this video has helped you out, please let us know by a like, a comment, or a subscribe.